Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of California Saltwater Fishing. Today we're going to make fish chowder. So it's one of my favorite dishes and a great way to use some extra meat like the head meat and other things. So I just wanted to go over the ingredients that we are going to use today. So first of which is the fish. So we're gonna start with um, this halibut head that we have here and some of the fish trimmings that we're gonna use for the stock. And that's reserved for the stock itself, the fish stock, which we'll make in a minute here. And we also have some chopped up rock cod filet that we'll be using for the actual um, fish chowder itself. So that's some good quality meat. You can use any sort of white colored fish meat that you have. Um, white fish is also good, cod meat is good, whatever that you like and whatever sort of white type of meat fish head that you use, um, like a rock fish or things like that. So we've got that portion there. For the stock, we're going to use some parsley. We're also going to use some rough cut onion and we'll season that with some salt and pepper and some bay leaves as well. So these are all going into the stock and I like to throw a little hondashi into the stock too just to give it a little extra fishy flavor. And also we can season it with some ground onion powder and some ground garlic too. As for the actual um, chowder itself, other than using the, the fish that we spoke of, use some more finely chopped onion. I'd like to throw in about six cloves of garlic chopped up and some celery as well as some finely chopped parsley. To make the roux that's the base of the stock, we'll use some bacon, as you can see here. I like to keep it whole, some people chop it up. Later we'll deal with breaking it into small pieces. I like to start with it as a whole and about three tablespoons of butter and then of course the uh, flour and I forgot to mention in the chowder itself we'll be using some russet potato that has already been peeled and chopped some people like to um, keep the peels on personally I like to take the peels off and you see that I have it soaking in water. I do that as a personal thing to help keep the potato from starting to turn brown, sitting out in the air. Sitting in the water tends to keep it from getting that sort of brownish, sort of yucky look. And also other ingredients, we have um, the whipped cream over there, as well as the um, milk that we use for the actual um, chowder itself. So as you can see, very basic ingredients, nothing too complicated, stuff that you bring from your trip, as well as stuff that you can easily get from the store and that you might just have sitting around in the pantry. We'll include the ingredients in the description below. All right, so to start our stock, we'll go ahead and put the vegetables into the stock that we're gonna be using. So first we'll start with some of the uh, whole parsley. So throw that in there, as well as a couple of bay leaves. So get that into there too. We'll also go ahead and dump in our rough, chop, rough chopped, I should say, onions into the stock and get that going nice as well too. So start with that and then We'll also go ahead and put in some cracked pepper or whole peppercorn. I like to use the, the whole stuff in the stock itself. Might as well get that going. And of course, you gotta have some salt. So I like to use kosher salt. You can use sea salt, whatever you like. But I just go ahead and put a decent chunk of salt into there because we want the broth to be nice and salty. And as mentioned before, the hondashi is one of my favorites. I'd like to get that put into the stock. So we'll start that off in there. And then as the water is already starting to heat up, we will go ahead and put our fish that's going to go into there, starting with the head that's been nicely cleaned. So we'll go ahead and put this beautiful halibut head into the water, get that going. 
as well as the before mentioned fish trimmings, which are basically like little bits that were pulled off of the fillets as we trimmed them. You can see there's a little bit of a fin there, as well as some bonier rib meat types of pieces. Pieces that probably aren't gonna be so good for the actual chowder itself. So we'll get all of that in there. So that's step one, Put it, bring that up to a full boil, let it cook, let it reduce down for a bit. So we'll get that part started. So as you can see there, it looks beautiful. It's gonna cook down for a bit, and then we will move on to step number two. So step two is making the roux. So let's go ahead and throw our bacon into the pan. Personally, I like to use the same um, pot, I should say, not pan, the pot that I'm gonna be making the chowder in itself, because why waste some of that beautiful flavor on a pan that you're just gonna end up washing out anyway. So we'll go ahead and get that started in there. We're gonna let the uh, bacon cook down for a bit. So rather than spare you the agony of watching bacon cook, we'll go ahead and wait until the bacon is cooked down first, and then we'll come back. So all right, now once we've got the bacon nice and crispy, we'll go ahead and remove it from the heat. As you can see they're looking beautiful. Make sure we get as much of those drips off. That's where all the flavor is. We'll go ahead and put that to the side, let it cool down a bit and we'll come back to that later. But for now you can see we've got some nice oil there from the bacon in the pot. And I personally think that a little bit more is always better. So let's go ahead and throw that butter into there. Get that sizzling up with it too. Oops, oh, excuse me. And then we'll go ahead and Stir that around a bit, melt it down, mix it up with our bacon fat. Lower down the heat just a little bit. Get those two in there together. And then of course, the flour. So go ahead and throw your flour in. And this is where we want to start whisking it to make your roux. So go ahead and drop in the flour, whisk it up, get it started there. This is when I like to come in and throw a little, little extra flavor into the mix, a little more is always better. Throw in a little bit of the granulated onion, a little bit of the granulated garlic and season it with salt and pepper. Always got to have some season. Everything, every step you do, you should always season. And then we'll go ahead and keep whisking that up. See a little bit of it scoring to the bottom of the, the pot. That's okay. That's why I like to do this on a, um, like a metal Type of pot rather than the non-stick because you'll scratch that all up. So let's go ahead and get that mix up real good. Get it nice and dissolved in there so you can see it's starting to come together nicely. So looking good. Make sure that it's nice and whisked up. And now that we've got that going, Let's go ahead and add our aromatics to the mix. Starting with some garlic. A chopped up onion. And the celery. So we'll start with those guys in there. Mix them up, use them to kind of break up some of the stuff on the bottom too. So you can see some of it starting to come apart and attach itself to our aromatics. Cook that up, get it nice and brown. Let that brown up. 
and over next to it we've got the we've got the stock going so that's starting to set up nicely as you can see the bits of fish are starting to break off the bone the head's starting to fall apart exposing all of its wonderful yumminess to our fish stock so let that keep rolling it's getting a good boil going there and then we will come back to our roux base So you can see they're getting nice and brown and yummy. Mix that up as well. And then we will go ahead and get the potatoes in. I'm just gonna empty some of the water out from the potatoes. Some of it, not all of it. And then we'll go ahead and drop the potatoes in. Kiss them with some of that flavor in there as well too. And start scraping off some of this from the bottom. Like I said, that's where a lot of your flavor is. So we'll go ahead and mix that up. As you can see, potatoes are starting to get some of that roux on them. And we'll let that cook for a minute as well as the uh, stock and we'll come back in just a bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and pour out our stock into a bowl so we can filter out all of the bits of bone and stuff that we don't want. see in there there's lots of bits of fish and things we may come back to that and pick through for some of the good bits later to add back to the chowder so after we sift that out we should have a nice clean stock to work with at this point we'll go ahead and bring that back over to the pan where, or the pot where we're cooking the rest of it so stay tuned for the next step so now we are going to we're going to go ahead and ladle in some of that beautiful fish stock that we just made. Ladle in a couple of scoops and then go ahead and mix it up and raise the temperature on the pot up to where you can get into a boil. So there you see it's nice and thick in the pot. And go ahead and try to scrape off as much of that flavor as possible. So after we get that first ladle in, go ahead and steadily introduce, say about five or six of these at a time in the beginning. stop mix it up once again trying to get the flavor off the bottom and we'll go ahead and keep doing that for this step and then once we've got all of it added in I'll go ahead and show you the next step after that all right now that we've got ourselves a good boil going we will go ahead and put that bacon back in, just crumble it up by hand. Make sure your hands are nice and clean though, but go ahead and just crumble that up, drop it all back in. See, much easier than slicing it up ahead of time. And we will go ahead and 
I pulled some of the meat out of the um, what we used to make the stock with to make sure that there was no bones in it. So I'll go ahead and add that meat back in. There's still some good meat around the head. So I went ahead and pulled that off. And then we'll go ahead and put some of the fresh meat in there too. Let that boil up. Give that a minute or two. While that's boiling up, we'll also go ahead and add our parsley into the mix. And we'll give everything a nice good stir. that's starting to brew up nicely and now here comes the time when we go ahead and add turn that off sorry so we've gone ahead and we've added the fish the bacon and the parsley back into this we'll let it boil back up and now we'll go ahead and add the cream and the milk I like to add the cream first to get an idea of the consistency that we're dealing with. An important thing with chowder is that you want the right consistency so that you don't want it too watery and you also don't want it too pasty thick. We are going to boil this down for a bit. So if it starts out a little bit thinner than you'd like, that's okay. Just give it some time and let it boil down. So I'm not a guy who likes to measure much. I just like to go off of what I feel is the right amount, so we'll go ahead and pour a decent chunk of cream into the mix. Probably a couple of cups there. And then we'll go ahead and put a cup or so of milk in. And now we let it come back up to a boil. Once it comes back up to a boil, we'll drop it down to a simmer and let it sit for about an hour or two. And then we will come back and we will just add some milk to get it down to the right thickness that we like. And that's pretty much how you do it. So pretty simple recipe, something that any of us can do with whatever white meat fish you got laying around. And it's a lot of fun. And um, go ahead and give it a try. See what you think. Make it for yourselves. If you have any comments or suggestions or the ways that you like to make it, because by no means is this the only way to do it, go ahead and leave that in the comments section below. And like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Otherwise, tight lines out there, everybody. And looking forward to seeing you in the next video.